In this lesson, we will discuss the new PBR shading workflow available in V-Ray Next for Rhino. The new V-Ray Metallic Material gives us a very straightforward method for using PBR textures, popular with texturing software such as Substance Painter and Designer. We will also cover how we can fine-tune and tweak our texture without the need for any other software, using V-Ray Next's new built-in spline and Bezier curves. PBR textures have made a major impact in the 3D industry in recent years. While they could previously be used with V-Ray with a small tweak, we have streamlined the workflow so that in V-Ray Next, you can now drag and drop metalness and roughness textures right into the metallic shader. For more detailed information on the metalness PBR workflow, you can check out our Understanding Metalness post on our blog page, which explores this topic in depth. Not only does it offer a comprehensive overview of working with PBR textures and how to implement them in your workflow, but you'll also find a cheat sheet with the correct base color and IOR values for commonly used metals that you can create with V-Ray. You can also find this chart on our docs page as well. All right, let's get back to the new V-Ray metallic material. We can start an interactive render and see what we have in this scene so far. From the render, you can see that most of the bike already has set materials, except for the frame, which has a generic white V-Ray material. Let's see how we can create a carbon fiber bike frame using the new metallic material. Open the asset editor, and in the materials tab, let's select the frame generic material and open the flyout menu to the right so we can have a preview. Next, let's right click on the frame generic material and choose select objects in scene. Now, Let's create a metallic material by right-clicking on the Materials tab icon and selecting Metallic. Now we can simply right-click on it and choose Apply to Selection to apply it to the bike frame. Right away, you'll notice that it appears a bit different from the generic material in our preview. Now let's try to recreate a carbon fiber material. The values to pay attention to here are the base color, the IOR, and the metalness parameter which have been specifically created to support a PBR workflow. Again, you can input the values for these parameters found in the metalness chart in our docs to quickly replicate real-world metals such as gold and copper and get realistic results. Now, the metalness parameter here is what allows you to specify whether your material is either a non-metal or a metal by setting it to either zero or one. For example, you'll see how the bike frame changes in appearance and looks metallic when I increase it to one. You can think of this parameter more like an on-off switch for a non-metal or metal material. Values in between 0 and 1 do not correspond to any real-world materials, so they should be avoided if you want a realistic result. Lastly, you can tweak the shader's roughness parameter to control how shiny or rough the surface of the material looks. Feel free to set this to your liking. Okay, now that we've covered the basic fundamentals, you'll see that the major benefit of this parameter here is that you can now easily plug in detailed texture maps to define which parts of your object are metal or not. This enables you to create more complex looking materials, such as corroded metals. Let's explore typical workflow using texture maps from software like Substance Painter. In the Asset folder, we have a set of textures exported from Substance Painter using the default PBR Metal Rough preset. To load them in, let's start by right-clicking on the color texture swatch and then selecting the bitmap option. From here, we can select the bike frame base color PNG file. Once that's loaded in, you'll see it appear in the interactive preview, as well as see the texture itself in the live swatch preview above. One thing to keep in mind here is the color space used for the textures. For any textures that contribute color, be it diffuse or reflection, the color space should be set to screen space sRGB. Let's go ahead and load in the other textures and select their proper color space. The metalness, Roughness and Normal Map will all need to have their color space switched to Rendering Space Linear. This will prevent any gamma correction from being applied to these texture files before shading so that they display the correct PBR results. And, when loading in the normal texture, let's make sure to enable the Bump and Normal Mapping and switch the mode to normal. Once again, let's also make sure to change the color space to linear as well. Okay, 
Now that we've loaded in our textures, you can see that our bike is looking more colorful and glossy, but I'd like to tweak it further. Let's explore how we can use the new curve controls in V-Ray Next to further tweak the appearance of the textures and our bike's frame. If we twirl up the bump in normal mapping and return to our metallic materials color texture swatch, we can right click on the base color texture to pull up the wrap in menu. In here, let's select the spline curve option. The wrap in menu makes it easy to plug one texture into another by putting our original base color texture inside of the spline curve, which we can then use to further modify it to our desire. In the Hue tabs graph below, we can click to create a point somewhere on the curve and then drag it to change the hue color of the bike frame. I like this bluish color, but you can feel free to experiment with it to your liking. Note that you can also change the interpolation of each point from the interpolation drop down menu as well, which offers us various ways to modify the curve's shape. For example, let's change the interpolation mode to smooth so the transition between the hue colors is smoother. And you'll see that the graph curve updates as well as the hue color of the base texture. Okay, now let's leave V-Ray to render the image for a moment so we can see the final result. Now you've seen how using the new metallic shader in V-Ray Next, you can use texture maps from software such as Substance Painter to create incredibly realistic and detailed looking materials. Together with the new curve options, you'll also have more flexibility than ever to tweak your shaders and create photorealistic looking images.